We learned a while ago that everything is made up of atoms. We just learned what atoms themselves are made of. An atom contains a small, massive nucleus with a positive charge at the center and light, negative electrons forming standing waves in the space around the nucleus. The word element comes from the Latin elementum, meaning principle or rudiment. It's the same root as elementary school, where children learn the basic ideas on which they will build knowledge for the rest of their lives. The chemical elements are the basic materials out of which everything on Earth is built. As you might expect, the contents of an atom affect how it interacts with other atoms. Atoms are all made of the same basic components, but they don't all behave the same. What makes them different is how many of the basic components a particular atom has. The deciding difference between atoms is the number of electrons. Electrons compose the outer parts of atoms, so it makes sense that they're what interacts with other atoms. The social behavior of an atom depends on how many electrons it has. Although the electrons are the active part when atoms get together, we consider the number of protons in the nucleus of an atom to be its most determining characteristic. There are several practical reasons for that, the most important being that the number of protons determines the number of electrons. The electrical interaction between positive protons and negative electrons is very strong. It's practically impossible to maintain a sizable charge imbalance in any material, so matter is basically electrically neutral. For an atom to be neutral, it must have the same number of electrons as protons, because electrons and protons have exactly opposite charges. We call this number, the number of protons, the atomic number of an element. Atoms with the same atomic number behave so much alike that we consider them the same element. The specific characteristics of the different elements are so important to our understanding of matter that we have given each one a name. There are about 90 elements found on Earth and more that have been produced in the laboratory. There are very different amounts of the different elements in existence. There is more hydrogen in the universe than all the other elements combined, and more helium than all the rest combined. Some elements form much more readily than others, and many nuclei decay soon after they form. Of the elements that do exist on Earth in significant quantities, most are always found in compounds with other elements and never alone. A few are sometimes found on their own, or can be liberated from their compounds fairly readily, so that the ancients were aware of them. These include carbon, familiar as charcoal, and historically prominent metals like copper, iron, gold, silver, tin, lead, mercury, and zinc. Sulfur was known from volcanic deposits. You've doubtless heard of other elements. Anything we use a lot, we want to be able to represent concisely. So each element name has a compact symbol to represent it. Every symbol consists of one or two letters. The first letter is capitalized, and the second, if there is a second, is lowercase. There are exceptions. After elements are discovered, but before they are named, they are given a temporary symbol that basically spells out the atomic number using Greek or Latin root names. Atomic numbers are now into triple digits, so these temporary symbols have three letters. The electrons that matter the most to how an atom behaves are the ones with the highest energy, which are the most distant from the nucleus and the most shielded from the positive charge of the nucleus by the inner electrons. These outer electrons are known as valence electrons. Although elements have different properties, Many of these properties depend in predictable and understandable ways on atomic number. Similarities and differences between elements are prominently emphasized when the elements are arranged into the periodic table. We can tell a lot about the structure of an atom and the reactivity of an element by its position in the table. The periodic table is a graphical display of the elements by ascending order of atomic number. Hydrogen the element with only one proton is at the top left position in the table, and atomic number increases to the right and down. Most of the time, an increase of the atomic number by one puts an element's position in the periodic table one column to the right. But when the accompanying electron 
has to go into a higher valence energy level, the table begins a new row. So the table tells us something about the valence electron's energies and wave functions, as well as about the element's atomic number. The number of valence electrons and the properties of their wave functions influence the chemical properties of the elements, so elements in the same column of the periodic table have similar chemical properties. Elements in the same column, you see, have the same number of valence electrons, and the valence electrons are in orbitals with the same basic shapes. They're just in different energy levels, which means a different number of radial nodes. Now, helium is an exception here. It has only two electrons total, while the other elements in its column all have eight valence electrons. I'm not showing a periodic table here because I'm lazy, but if you look at one, and there is one on page 188 of your textbook, you'll see that the rows of the table are longer as you go down the table to heavier elements and higher valence levels. This is because standing waves with more nodes have more possible unique patterns.